So hello and welcome to Codex. Today we are very happy to have Gerland Planckehoek from the University of Göttingen. In the past quarter of a century, Professor Planckehoek has been a leading researcher in applied harmonic analysis, starting with work in wavelets and curvelets, orthogonal polynomials and splines, and refinable functions, as well as their applications in signal and image processing. Other areas of her research include regularization and nonlinear diffusion, fast algorithms and their numerical stability, in particular variants of the fast Fourier transform, and Prony's method, a sparse Fourier method that makes use of algebraic techniques. She was chosen by the German Mathematical Society, Deum Fau, to give the 2016 Emmy Noter lecture, where she spoke on Prony's method. She has led many funded research projects and is currently serving as the head PI of the research training group on discovering structure and complex data, statistics meets optimization and inverse problems. In the few years the program has run, 26 students have completed doctoral degrees and a further 21 are currently working on their degrees. Today, Professor Planckehoek will be speaking on optimal rank one Hunkel approximation of matrices and take it away. Yeah, thank you very much for that nice introduction and thank you for the invitation to this seminar. So the title of my talk is, as you have said already, Optimal Rank 1 Hankel Approximation of Matrices. And, uh, and now I have to find out how to go further. I don't know. Sometimes you might need to re-click on the PDF. Um, oh, you yes. So the outline of my talk will be as follows. So first, I'd like to give you a quite longer introduction because maybe I should have uh, put the talk uh, as low, low rank Hankel approximation, not just rank one approximation, because that is a very special case. So I'd like to give you some longer introduction why we are really interested in low rank Hankel matrices and where uh, it comes up in applications and why we had some hope to be able to solve such a problem really exactly, even if the optimization problem that is behind is, of course, a non convex one. So, and in the second part of the talk, I will look at rank one Hankel matrices, and we want to try to solve that uh, with regard to the Frobenius norm and to the spectral norm. And in the end, I also would like to give you some comparison to Katsu's algorithm, which is uh, an algorithm, a heuristic algorithm that is very uh, often used for, for structure and low rank uh, matrices. And uh, this work has been done in uh, together with my PhD students, Hannah Knirsch and Markus Petz. So before we start, I'd like to remind you uh, to an important theorem from linear algebra, the eckhart young mirsky theorem that tells you how well we are able to approximate with uh, rank R matrices. So the best you can do if you have no structure if there is no structure involved, is of course that what you get uh, for the SVD. You, you start with a matrix A, uh, can be rectangular, and you take the corresponding SVD with ordered singular values. I always start with uh, sigma zero. This is a larger singular value. And then I can always solve my my uh, problem to find the best rank R approximation of my matrix A uh, just by taking uh, by taking the singular vectors corresponding to the largest R singular values yeah, together uh, of this type. And that solves me uh, not only the, the optimization problem in the spectral norm, but also in the Frobenius norm. And I know already in advance what the error will be. The error is here exactly the singular value, the first singular value, the largest one, which is not used here in the rank R approximation. And uh, for the Frobenius norm, I have, of course, to add up all the singular values that I have not taken, yes, squared and then the square root of that. So this is uh, what we know. And this is a benchmark. So we cannot be better than that in the, in the error, of course. So if we now look at uh, optimal low rank Hankel approximation, then uh, we will have to work with matrices like this. So these are Hankel matrices. Hankel matrices are matrices where always the counter diagonal has the same value. So that means that such a matrix H is already completely de determined if you know, say, the first 
row of the matrix and the last column. Yeah, it's it's determined by the vector starting with h zero and goes going up to h m plus n minus two, and then you can just fill up. You can also uh, say it the other way around and take the first column and the last row as you like. So, and the the problem that we want to look at is now we want to minimize. Uh, now in the Frobenius norm and in the spectral norm uh, over Hankel matrices of rank R. And that is of course in both norms, in the Frobenius and in the spectral norm, an, a non-convex problem that we want to solve. So there are already a lot of uh, solution strategies around for low rank Hankel approximation and uh, the most used approach is a Katsu algorithm. I will go to the Katsu algorithm in the end, so we will look at that more exactly, especially for the rank one case. Uh, but this is uh, an alternating projection algorithm for, uh, for this problem. But there are a lot of other ideas. For instance, a nonlinear structured least squares uh, uh, problem. So this is uh, there is a yeah, a full community working in this direction, or one can look at the problem as a nonlinear eigenvalue problem. This is especially done also in connection with Prony's method. If one tries to, to get a consistent method out of, of Prony's method, or one can try to relax the problem by taking a different norm, not just the Frobenius norm or the spectral norm, but uh, 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 other norms. Or one can take subspace methods. There is a full book by Van Overshe uh, in, in system analysis. And, and I would like to say a little bit more about that direction. Uh, a, there is the AAK theory coming from complex analysis, and it's working with infinite Hankel matrices, not just finite matrices as we are interested in in this moment, but the infinite case. And in the infinite case, a lot is known. And uh, we will come to that. And there's also one algebraic, uh, a paper with an algebraic method that I'm aware of by Ottaviani, where one is uh, trying to solve the problem again also exactly, not just for Hankel matrices, but for structured low rank matrices. So there are of course also a lot of applications behind. That is the reason why we have so many attempts to solve the problem. So the applications are for instance in linear system theory uh, for system identification. Then of course everything which is uh, connected anyhow with the reconstruction of finite rate of innovation signals. So which is anyhow connected with Prony's method or around is uh, also connected with Hankel matrices and in the end low rank approximation if you have noisy data. And maybe you have uh, heard about the so-called singular spectrum analysis. This is a method that is used especially in economics and one also looks at Hankel matrices and, and certain singular value uh, decomposition of Hankel matrices in, in that case. I'd like to go to one application a little bit closer, namely parameter identification with exponential sums. So this is connected with Prony's method. And I'd like to show you where Hankel matrices and low rank approximation of Hankel matrices comes in. So assume that you would like to find uh, a signal uh, where we know in advance that the signal has a special structure. So that means that uh, the sum that we have here is an, a so-called exponential sum. So we know in advance the structure, but we do not know the parameters. We do not know the CJ, and we also do not know this e to the alpha j in the sum. And depending on the application, we may not even know the number of terms here. That is, uh, depends. Sometimes we know the number of terms, sometimes not. But we would like to reconstruct the structure, so all the parameters in the structure, just by using function values. And for simplicity, I just assume here that we have just the function values f of l equidistant, say starting with zero. And we need, of course, enough values, uh, at least as many as we have unknowns here. Yeah, if you have cj and e to the alpha j, we have obviously, if m is given, then we have two m unknowns, so we have have to have at least 2m minus 1, uh, L to be larger than 2m minus 1, because we start with 0 here. 
So this is what we would like to have. And in order to get all these parameters just from the function values, we need to, to remember that such a structure is anyhow known to us already, namely as a general solution of uh, homogeneous difference equations uh, with constant coefficients. So I do not know if you have seen that already anywhere, but uh, this is exactly uh, such a structure of a solution. It happens also for, for uh, homogeneous uh, equations of ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients uh, similarly, but we look at difference equations because we have function values here. So then uh, how to solve that? So there is always a characteristic polynomial behind, and I call this characteristic polynomial here a uh, prony polynomial. And this polynomial is exactly defined by all the by all these um, parameters e to the alpha j that I he have here inside my structure. So these are my zeros of the polynomial. And of course, I, I want to find them. I do not know them. Yeah. So that means I also do not know the polynomial. I just put it this way. I determine it this way. We have exactly m linear factors here and we can multiply them out. And it's clear that such a polynomial always also have uh, a structure in monomials with certain coefficients PL. And we even know that the largest uh, coefficient, so the coefficient uh, to the largest power PM is equal to one, yeah? And, uh, and then we can uh, try to solve the problem by trying to find the Prony polynomial first. And instead of trying to find this, uh, coefficients e to the alpha j, we try to find these coefficients pl. And that can be done, namely just by looking at such a sum. We put in here all the coefficients pl that are not known to us, which are the coefficients of my prony polynomial. So I only know p pm because pm is one. Yeah? And then I multiply p uh, this pl with the function values, which I know. I take this little l here from zero to m, and I take this uh, little m in a way such that these are my known values. Yeah, so I have assumed that f of l is given and uh, in, in a certain range. And I take this little m in a way such that these are all my given function values. For instance, little m is going from 0 to l minus m here. And this is the l. So then if I do that, then I can put in now the structure of f which is exactly this exponential sum. Uh, x is now just little l plus m, I, I put that in here. And then I can, I have a second sum here, I can switch the sums, I can take the sum over j first, pull out everything which is not uh, just depending only on j and not on l. And then I have here the second sum. And the second sum is if I compare it with p of z here, I see that is my, my prony polynomial at the point z to b e to the alpha j. But e to the alpha j have been my zeros. And that is true for each j. So this p of a to the alpha j is always vanishing. So that means the sum is vanishing. So and if I now read that here, then I see, well, the pl are exactly the, the coefficients of my, of my uh, difference equations with constant coefficients of my linear homogeneous difference equation. Yeah, I can see it this way. And I can, of course, make a linear system out of, out of it because I know PM, I can put it onto the right hand side, but I also can leave it as it is. And then it would be uh, the following. So as you have seen here, so we have exactly F of L plus M. So this is a certain structure that we have here. If I look at the corresponding system and the structure is nothing but Hankel. Yeah, we have a Hankel system here. Uh, here we have now all the coefficients of my prony polynomial as a vector. And we see here what happens. I find the vector of my coefficients of the prony polynomial exactly as an eigenvector uh, corresponding to the eigenvalue zero. Or, well, it, it's a vector in the kernel of my matrix H, of my Hankel matrix. So, and if I have it, well, then I can, of course, uh, if I have all this piece then I can find the prony polynomial, I can find the corresponding zeros, and then I'm almost done because then I can uh, find the other coefficient CJ, just, uh, that is just a linear system to solve then in the end. So this is not a problem. Uh, and, but here we have the Hankel system. 
And I have written it now in a way, uh, if M would be known in advance, yeah, if the number of terms in my prony sum is known in advance, then I would put it this way. Then we have here exactly M plus one columns in this, uh, and at least so as many rows here. And then I know that uh, this Hankel matrix should have rank M. So that means the kernel has exactly a dimension one, and I find exactly one, uh, one, uh, um, interesting vector here in the kernel. So, uh, but if I do not know M in advance and I just need to put the Hankel matrix large enough with a lot of, with enough uh, columns and rows, and then still the theory tells me that the, the exponential sum that has been behind, yeah, gives me that such a Hankel matrix has to have exactly rank M. And then, uh, uh, then I, well, then I have to take this in the kernel. And if we now have, and that happens in practice always, yeah, if I have now that the function values are a little bit noisy, then this Hankel matrix, even if it should have rank M, it will not. Yeah, it will not. We need to have a numerical rank, need to take a numerical rank, or we have to, to, uh, to take a rank M a uh, low rank Hankel approximation. That is exactly what we need. Yeah, so, and here it comes in this way. And it is important that also the approximation has again Hankel structure that, that, since otherwise I will not come back to the exponential sum. So this uh, is one application. And so this is where we of course come from, but I have seen a lot of different uh, further applications within the last time. For instance, uh, for regularization in inverse problems. And it came up in parallel MRI. So I know at least two papers where it has been extensively used. And the idea is always that one tries to approximate the Fourier data, so missing Fourier data uh, in a way such that the corresponding Hankel matrix, if one is putting the data into a Hankel structure or a block Hankel structure, because we are here working with, with images in the, um, in the end, into a block Hankel structure, then uh, one is forcing this Hankel matrix to be of low rank. And uh, these ideas work quite well, interestingly, without any mathematical background behind. So it's not clear what kind of, of functions do you really force to have if you put in as a regularization term that the Hankel matrix of the data should have low rank. Similarly, we find uh, uh, papers for signal denoising, for instance, ALOHA or uh, uh, something in super resolution microscopy or uh, seismic denoising. So a lot of different ideas and always with, uh, with the application that one tries to put either the data themselves or the Fourier data uh, into the Hankel matrix and forces to have low rank. And the low rank is, as far as I think, heuristically, uh, if, uh, if I see what we know with prony methods, of course, anyhow related with uh, short exponential sums. So, and uh, a last thing before we start with the uh, rank one case, wh why did we have really some hope to solve the problem? And that hope is coming from the infinite case. As I told you already, uh, there is some theory in the complex analysis for infinite Hankel matrices. What you can do is the following. You can have here uh, a sequence fj starting with zero and the sequence gives me an infinite Hankel matrix just by putting in all these values of the sequence uh, into the first row and then you can fill up. Yeah? And then you have your, your Hankel matrix and assume for instance that it is little r2. And then it's known already for a long time, it's a theorem by Nehari, that such a, such a Hankel matrix, which is an operator now, of course, is, a, is bounded on little l2. So we get again a little l2 sequence. If we, if we apply uh, this operator to a little l2 sequence. If, if there exists a periodic function psi, which is bounded and periodic, uh, uh, two pi periodic here, and with a, which has exactly the Fourier coefficients fj for j larger than or equal to zero. So I only have to extend my Fourier series to the, to the negative part. So I, I need to find the corresponding Fourier coefficients of psi for, for, for negative j. And then 
I have to do that in a way such that the function psi is bounded. And I have uh, to find the best psi of this uh, in this way. And then the maximum norm, yeah, the norm in L, uh, in L infinity uh, of psi gives me exactly also the operator norm of, of gamma f. So this is the connection. And we know even more, and now we come to low rank uh, approximation. So we know, uh, and that can be found already, uh, for instance, in the book uh, of Pella, but it's surely even older, uh, uh, that if we have such a infinite Hankel matrix, then this Hankel matrix has finite rank n, say n, if and only if the corresponding sequence fj that is determining my, my uh, matrix, uh, if the corresponding z transform of the sequence is exactly a rational function of type n minus 1n. So that means uh, a rational function, it's, it's a polynomial over polynomial, yeah, and the polynomial in the numerator is just of degree n minus 1, and in the denominator it's just n. So we have a connection between finite rank of Hankel matrices and rational functions here. And uh, how is it now uh, connected with our exponential sums that we have looked at before? Well, you can see that this way. For example, if I, I take here this Z transform of the FJ, and if I assume that this is indeed a rational function of type N minus one N, then I may be able to write it as such a sum, this is a partial fraction decomposition of a rational function. So this is this is a little bit special example because I assume here already that the polynomial in the denominator has pairwise different uh, zeros. Yeah, then I can um, put it like this, and yeah, so you can think about these are my linear factors of my polynomial in the denominator, and if I multiply that out, then I have exactly n of them. And that would be my uh, denominator polynomial. And in the numerator, I get uh, one degree less. So I can put it uh, always this way. So, but if then CKC is smaller than, has a modulo smaller than one, then I can just apply uh, the geometric series expansion. And then I get the sum over J, CK to the J times CJ, like this. Yeah, and I've written it this way. Uh, because now I can compare the sum with this sum and I see, well, I have my rational structure exactly if the, if the, if the values fj have, have this structure here, but this structure is exactly the exponential sum structure with n terms. Yeah, zk can be also be written with the e to the alpha k if you like. Yeah, this is, this is exactly the exponential sum that we had seen also in Prony's method. So the exponential sum structure is obviously important for uh, low rank Hankel matrices. And even better, we know from our Aram, Arof, and Krein that uh, if we order all the singular values of the Hankel operator, a zero of gamma f is a larger singular value, it's a decreasing sequence, then there always exists a Hankel operator exactly of, or at most of rank n, such that the error gamma f minus gamma n is just the next singular value. That is the, in fact, the n plus one singular value because I started here with a zero. And this is the best we can hope for because this, if you uh, remember what we had in the Eckhart Young Mirsky theory, that is better, it, it is not possible to have it better, but here we even have structure. So this is true for the operator norms. And therefore we hoped, of course, in fact, what we have to do is we have just to transfer what we have here for the infinite case, also to the finite case. But this seems to be quite difficult. What we are able to do is this, is the following. If we have a Hankel operator in inf uh, infinite Hankel matrix with uh, a certain rank, it's finite, but maybe large, then we are able to find a further operator gamma n with a smaller rank yeah, that you can fix in advance, such that we really get the best error estimate. So we know how to find this approximation gamma n of this uh, Hankel matrix, infinite Hankel matrix uh, gamma fm. Uh, there we have an algorithm. Yeah, this is done in, in the, in, together with my PhD student Flada Pototskaya. 
and ideas are also already in the paper by Belkin and Monson. So, and that is the reason why we tried to, to, to look at the hunger problem and had really some hope to solve it. So, and now I'd like in the second part of my talk, I'd really like to go to the rank one uh, approximation problem in the Frobenius norm and in the spectral norm. And in order to do that, the first thing is we need to think about how does a, a Hankel matrix of rank one look like? And we need to characterize such matrices. And interestingly, it's very simple. Yeah, the only matrix which is Hankel and rank one is of this form. We have only two parameters. We have a constant C, we can always multiply with a constant C. And we have uh, a parameter Z such that this, uh, this is a my Hankel matrix. There's only one special case left, which is not covered by the structure. And this is the Hankel matrix where we have just one, only one non-zero term in the lower right corner. Yeah, this is the, the special case. Otherwise, we always uh, have, have just the structure for rank one matrices. And I can put it if I take here a vector Zn like, uh, like this, just it's one Z, Z squared and so on then I, I can put this H1, so this Hankel matrix just in a, in a vector form like yeah, constant times the ZM times ZN transpose and that is obviously rank one yeah? and, and Hankel both. So, and that means if you have this characterization and now we look at the Frobenius norm problem, then we only may have to minimize in the end over, over two parameters, C and Z. Yeah? This is now my rank one uh, Hankel matrix that I have here and I, I have already simplified the problem quite strongly. And then we get the following theorem for this case. We can start with any matrix, can be complex, can be rectangular, need not to be Hankel. So we need not to start with a Hankel matrix. I just assume that the left upper corner value is the amplitude is larger than in the, the lower right corner because uh, then it cannot happen that the special other case yeah, uh, happens. So then we really have this form, uh, the structure for our best uh, approximation. And then we can show that, yeah, we can find the best parameters that I call here Z tilde and C tilde, depending only on, on A. And what we have to do is, well, we still have to solve a optimization problem here. This is more or less a, a rational function where I need to find the extremum, yeah, the extremum value. And, uh, and where this is attained, that is my value Z tilde. And, the C tilde is then fixed by, by the Z, uh, by, if I have the Z, uh, then, I, the, then this coefficient is always fixed. And if you think about, uh, well, linear algebra, it looks a little bit like, especially if we uh, take, oh, if we take the square, um, if we take the square here, then uh, it looks uh, a little bit like, a, Rayleigh quotient, yeah, but it, it's not exactly, but uh, but it's close. Yeah, the A is of course not a symmetric matrix, and uh, uh, but uh, but it's anyhow clear that if we would be able to take this vector Z n uh, like the singular uh, vector corresponding to the larger singular value of A. Well, then that would be the best, and then we would get here. We would get here exactly the this larger singular value, and uh, and that is of course uh, what we would like to have. So that means we need to to be close anyhow to the singular vector with our z vector. So, and this is exactly what we also can find. So if we now ask, in which case do we really have the optimal error that also happens for the eckhart young mirsky theorem? So. Uh, then we can say, well, it happens exactly if the, the, the singular, the two singular vectors u and v corresponding to the largest singular value are already of the right form. So like one z z squared, yeah, for a certain, for a certain parameter z have uh, already, it's normalized of course, uh, but they have already the special form. Otherwise not, otherwise we have no, uh, we have not the possibility to get it. So there's only, well, always this special exception, yeah, with this uh, lower, corner, lower uh, right corner that we also can look at. 
Here I have an example now. This is a matrix. Well, it's already Hankel. It's obviously a rank one matrix. And we want now to try to find the optimal rank one Hankel approximation with our idea, just maximizing this rational function that uh, I showed you. And in this case, interestingly, we get even uh, two parameter sets uh, uh, that work out that both give me the same error. So both of them are, uh, are, are good. Yeah, and this is the Hankel matrix that I get. And you see also here the error of the Frobenius norm, and it works, of course. Uh, if I compare that to Katsu's algorithm, and I will come to Katsu algorithm later, to this alternating projection algorithm, which is usually taken, um, then we get just that matrix, which is, of course, not the best one in the Frobenius norm, uh, because the norm is uh, then just true. So, uh, we uh, went a little bit further thinking about how we can improve uh, the numerics in that case. And that is, of course, true if we go back to real uh, rank one Hankel approximation. So we start with a real matrix and we want just to find uh, only uh, also a Hankel matrix of rank one, which is uh, itself a real matrix. And then we can use all the ideas that we usually have. So we, we know that we have more or less to maximize a, a rational function. So that means that we have to, uh, to take the derivative and put it to be zero. And then in the end, it's something like a polynomial equation. So we need to look at zeros of a, of a certain uh, polynomial yeah, in Z tilde. And if we are in the real case and we look at Z tilde only, on the real line, then uh, then we have to, to go through a certain number of zeros in order to find the solution. So this is more or less uh, this. And if we uh, know a little bit more about the structure of our matrix A, if we know, for instance, that uh, what we have in this rational function in the numerator, uh, this is, of course, also always a polynomial. And if this polynomial has a, a certain structure, say, for instance, that the coefficients that we get here from the matrix A, more or less, uh, are always, for instance, non-negative and decreasing, it's even enough if, say, A2L is dec decreasing and A2L plus 1, so the odd index sequence and the even index sequence both are decreasing. If this is true, then we can very quickly find the best solution because then we know that this optimal Z tilde will always be in the interval 0, 1. And we even know that this will be the only 0 that happens uh, in the only positive 0 even. So we, we can just take a Newton method and with the initial value one, for instance, and just go through for a few steps and, and have the Z tilde really very quickly. So then it's, it's a very simple thing. And uh, there are more theorems of this type. Yeah, if, if it is instead of decreasing, you can uh, also look at increasing sequences and you know that the Z tilde will be larger than one and so on. This is uh, working. But well, if we look at the problem of optimal rank one uh, Hankel approximation in the real case, then we have, of course, also to ask, uh, is it really true that if you start with a real matrix A, that your uh, rank one Hankel approximation can be already found uh, with, with, a real, with real parameters. So is a real rank one uh, Hankel matrix always the best solution for a real uh, matrix A? And this is unfortunately not the case. So we can find matrices, for instance, this one is an example, quite a simple example, already Hankel with eigenvalues uh, like this. Yeah, two is the largest one and Frobenius norm here. And if we now just apply the theorems that I showed you for the real Hankel approximation, then we get again two solutions. And you can see here that they have not to be symmetric or so. It's just uh, always just uh, uh, we have to maximize a rational function and it can happen that that maximum is attained at, at different values, at different values C tilde and we get the corresponding C tilde. Yeah, so, but of course, for both solutions, we get the same error. This is the solution, solution this error. But if we allow C tilde and Z to be complex, then we get something better. Namely, if Z tilde is I, and here, this is, so the solution is even much simpler, as you see here. And we get, again, two solutions, also with minus I, 
uh, in both cases, the error is just 1.795. It's much smaller than this one. Yeah, so we cannot be sure to get a, an uh, optimal rank one approximation in the which is real if we start with a real matrix. Interestingly, the Katsu algorithm would never look at, at the complex case if we have a real matrix that we start with. Okay, and, and even worse, Katsu algorithm completely fails in this case. So if you try to apply Katsu's algorithm and try to get a rank one approximation with Katsu's algorithm here, then you get just a zero matrix. It's not working at all. So, and now, I'd like to go to the spectral norm. So what happens in the spectral norm? The spectral norm is really much, much more, more difficult than, than the Frobenius norm. And we, we really had a quite needed quite some time to, to, to get an idea how to solve the problem. And we uh, restrict ourselves now to matrices which are real and square and symmetric. Yeah, so we, we look only at such matrices, need not to be Hankel themselves, but symmetric and square uh, real matrices. So then uh, assume that these are now my eigenvalues of the matrix A, and I assume in advance that the, the largest eigenvalue is a single one. Yeah, so I, I'd like to get something if I do a rank one approximation, so otherwise uh, yeah, the, the second eigenvalue has the same magnitude and I do not see anything in the error. And I know, of course, for symmetric matrices that there is an orthogonal basis of real eigenvectors always. Yeah, so I find a, a, such a basis. And we, again, we of course know now, uh, we still use how the Hankel matrix of rank one looks like. So we have uh, uh, this vector. And, uh, and this is always now of length n, yeah, because in both directions, so we have now a square matrix, so therefore I can get rid of the n because it's always n. Uh, uh, and then we had figured out that uh, this special function is important in order to solve the problem for the spectral norm. So what is this? This function is now and you can see that maybe better in this uh, in this form, it's now again a very special Rayleigh quotient, namely a Rayleigh quotient again just for this z vector. The z vector was just this one, yeah, one z and so on. It's only determined by this one, by my one parameter z that I have here, uh, and uh, such a matrix comes in that is a squared. A squared is of course still symmetric minus lambda squared i. So lambda squared is the next parameter that I have here. It's a, a positive parameter uh, to the minus one. So we take the inverse. It's still symmetric, obviously, and it's clear this will be uh, this inverse ex exists if lambda squared is not an eigenvalue uh, itself, an eigenvalue of, of a squared. Yeah. So then then this will exist. So, and we will look at this function exactly in this open interval between lambda one squared and lambda zero squared. This lambda squared will be in the end my, my error that I get for the spectral norm. So this, this will be in that interval only in the special case if, uh, if I get a good solution S in the eckhart yang mirsky theorem, then I could hope for a error for the error to be lambda one squared, yeah. So this uh, this uh, lambda one squared only then. Otherwise not. Otherwise it should be in this range. So it's the error in the end. And we uh, we can look indeed at this at this limit for lambda squared uh, going to from above to lambda one squared. And but this is only nicely determined if I assume that the corresponding uh, eigenvectors corresponding to lambda one squared and to each other eigenvalue of the same magnitude is orthogonal to my z vector. Yeah, so if I if you write that down, then it's nothing but if you if you take a polynomial out of it, so it has to be the zero of the of the polynomial that is uh, obtained from this uh, from this um, eigenvector v k. So only in this case, then we can more or less replace this minus one by, yeah, then we, we have here more Penrose inverse and then it works out. 
And now I go the other way around. We first look at the problem if, uh, in which case do I have an optimal rank one Hankel approximation error, which is optimal, which is as good as in the young mirsky theory. Um, so, and that is uh, only the case if, as we have seen just, if uh, the eigenvectors corresponding to, to my Z tilde vector uh, is equal to zero, so that means that my my c tilde per parameter is a is a zero of this of the corresponding polynomial which is given by the vk, and if the special function that I showed you just is larger than or equal to zero at lambda one squared, yeah, uh, if I put the z tilde, only in this case it works out, and in this case I also find then the other coefficient c tilde that I need for my Hankel approximation, and if we have really a larger than one, uh, larger than zero here, then I even have a range, I will find even a range for my coefficient c tilde, so that means we, we will have a lot of solutions. If I have an equality here, then we have exactly one coefficient c tilde here. So this is what happens, but this is in, in fact a case which is very rare. So in, it's much more, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, usually the case that we do not get a solution that which is as good as in the eckhart young mirsky theorem. So usually we will get something uh, that the, our best error uh, here uh, written here is in this open interval from uh, uh, lambda one, lambda zero. And uh, we find this indeed just by looking at our function and uh, where this function has to be maximized for, for if you have lambda tilde, if you have this, this best, this optimal error, then the maximum over z of this function is exactly zero and the z tilde is then exactly the argmax of that function. This is what we get, and it looks a little bit strange, but we can really get an algorithm out of it because we can just try, we can just start with a, a lambda tilde within the open interval, say in the middle, for instance, and then have a look at the corresponding function that is then just a function in Z. It's a rational function in, in Z. We'll look at the maximum. If the maximum is larger than zero, then that means that we can take a smaller lambda tilde. If it is smaller than zero, then we have already, uh, then we have to take this lambda tilde larger. So that is like a bisection algorithm, uh, like an iterative algorithm to find, uh, to find uh, Z tilde and then also the error lambda tilde. And the other coefficient is then simple to find in the end. So, and that is fixed. So it works out and we uh, can find the, now the solutions for both for the Frobenius norm and the spectral norm. And we get uh, in this example, well, it's, I start with a Hankel matrix, but we have here these four eigenvalues and then we get optimal parameters for the Frobenius norm, as I showed you with, uh, uh, with the theorems that we had before and now for the spectral norm also. And what we see is first, they are different. So they are not the same. Differently from eckhart young mirsky theorem, which has been solved always just by the same matrix, here we get really different parameters and we get different optimal errors. And of course, the Frobenius uh, parameters give me the best error, the smallest error in the Frobenius norm. And the spectral parameters give me the best, the smallest error in the in the spectral norm, so that should be this way. Otherwise, we would have done a mistake. So, and you can see how the other work, uh, the others work. Katsu's algorithm works quite well in this case, as you see here. So, and now, uh, in the last part of the uh, of the talk, I'd like to say something about the Katsu algorithm. So, as I told you, Katsu algorithm is one of the most used algorithm for Lorenz structured Hankel approximation, not only for Hankel for structured approximation. And the reason is it is very simple. It's an alternating projection algorithm and I try to give you an idea how that works. So we need the one projection which, uh, which is a, a Hankelization, yeah? it's a counter diagonal averaging. So if you put, if I put in the definition, it's quite difficult, but if I show you an example, then you see how that works out. So if you start with the matrix A, 
then the Hankelization is, so this projection is now as follows. We just look in, uh, in the counter diagonal and if the entries are non this, not the same, I just take the sum uh, of the entries and I divide by the number of entries. So here three minus one is two divided by the number by two is one. So I have put in the one here. For the next diagonal, I have two plus two plus uh, minus one is equal to three. And I have to divide by three because we have three elements here. So it's one again. So I put in the one. You'll go further eight plus zero plus one is nine. I have to divide by three because we have three elements. Here we have the three and, uh, and so on. So as you see, it's, it's a very simple thing. And uh, this is really a projection because we can uh, show it's obviously idempotent. So if we apply that again, uh, and, and we have already Hankel matrix and nothing happens. And we have also uh, the norm, the operator norm one, because, well, at least in this rank one case, it's very simple to see if you start with some vectors A and B and you apply projection and you look at the spectral norm of this projected matrix, this is then no longer rank one. Yeah, so we have indeed possibly more eigenvalues, not only uh, one. Yeah, A, B star has just one uh, non-zero eigenvalue, but, uh, but this projection mix uh, changes it. And then obviously this is then smaller than or equal to the Frobenius norm. And this again is smaller or equal to A, B star in the Frobenius norm, because the projection makes, uh, makes the Frobenius norm smaller. So what we have done is averaging of the elements. And in the Frobenius norm, you have to add all the squares of all the elements. And uh, it's, it's better to have some larger elements yeah? so instead of averaging. So it's, it's, it's simple to show. But here we are now again back to rank one matrix. So that means the Frobenius norm and the spectral norm is the same. So, and now we have it. You see that the, the P norm applied to this matrix. Uh, so the norm is then smaller than or equal to the spectral norm here. And for Frobenius, we have it too. We have, we have it for both norms. Yeah, the, the norm of P is, uh, is smaller than or equal to one. And one happens, namely, if this is already Hankel. Yeah, if this is already, if we have a Z vector here, if this is Hankel, then the projector doesn't change anything and we have equality. So this is a projector. And now Katsos algorithm is just as follows. We start with a certain matrix A. We compute the best rank one approximation. So we, ta we take the singular vectors corresponding to the larger singular values and take just this best rank one uh, approximation corresponding to the eckhart young milsky theorem. Uh, then we iterate. So then we project again to the Hankel matrix. Uh, but then we have lost, of course, the rank one uh, uh, matrix. And then we just do it again. So we take now what we get here and, and take again a rank one Hankel, uh, uh, no, a rank one approximation, taking the singular vectors like this. And then again, so this is a iteration. It's a very simple iteration. And we can then look at the sequence of the, of the vectors that we get here, uj, vj, and also the sequence of, of uh, singular values that I get here. So, and I have written just the limits, the U is limits are U and V and Sigma. And it's of course not so clear that this, these limits really exist, but we can, we can show it in the, in the rank one case. It's really true. In the rank one case, we can show that all these sequences really converge, but it can happen. We have two, two cases, either the limit of the, uh, of the sigma j, so of the singular values that we get, uh, sigma is larger than zero. Then the Katsu algorithm really provides me an approximation which, uh, which is of rank one and of Hankel structure. So that means more or less, have, has to be this way, that u is exactly of the form that we need, yeah, with this z vector and v2. Both of them are exactly of this form. Or we get this uh, this lower uh, the lower right corner case. Yes, yeah, this, this is a special case. Or it can happen that my my limit of the of the singular values is is uh, not larger as zero. It's just zero. Then the Katsu algorithm just converges to the zero matrix, while the while the matrix. Uh, 
uh, u times v star does not have Hankel structure, need not to have Hankel structure. It's, it's uh, uh, can be something, yeah, it's not clear. You know, but you end up with a zero matrix, which is of course not a rank one approximation. And I show you an example. This is such a matrix A with eigenvalues uh, three, half, a half, a half here. And we've simply find the eigenvector uh, eigenvector singular vectors corresponding to the largest eigenvalue is just 101. Yeah, it's a uh, normalized 101, obviously. So if I if I take it and uh, multiply it with the largest eigenvalues, and I have uh, this matrix now. Now I have to hankelize this matrix. So and this matrix is just something like 101, and then in the large in the last row also 101. And if I hankelize, then I get here this uh, two over three. Yeah, this is what I uh, what I get, and then uh, if I now look at this uh, matrix, then we get new eigenvalues uh, um, five over four, one half, and so on. And if I now do the iteration again, then I find out that the next eigenvectors to the largest eigenvalue is again of the structure. It's again the same as here. And that, that happens always. We do not change. So that means this are stationary sequences, but the lambda j that we get, the singular values get smaller and smaller. So they go to zero. So these are constant sequences and the limit of the sigma j is zero. So that means the Katsu algorithm gives you just a zero matrix in the end, nothing else. So it doesn't work. Uh, for comparison, our algorithms uh, of course work, both of them. Uh, and in the Frobenius norm uh, and in the spectral norm, we again get even two solutions, two optimal solutions. And you see here uh, the corresponding errors. Here for the Frobenius norm, of course, this should be the smallest error because we have taken the parameters optimal for the Frobenius norm here. And the, and, uh, the parameters for the spectral norm uh, then give me, of course, the smallest error here also for the spectral norm. Yeah, so this is what we get. So the, it works, of course, uh, also in, the, in such cases where Katsu's algorithm doesn't work. So as a summary, what we have seen is we have now a numerical methods to compute the optimal rank one Hankel approximation uh, with regard to Frobenius and uh, to the spectral norm. And we have seen that it, it was a little bit more difficult than we, than we saw it in advance. I, we have to say that. And the optimal res uh, solutions with respect to the two norms are usually not the same. We get really different solutions. Uh, and or we also find out that the rank one Hankel approximation may be not unique, only the error is unique. You know, we, we, uh, we may get different parameter sets. We have seen that also in the examples. Katsu's algorithm always converges, but not always to a rank one matrix. That is what we have seen. It happens, it can happen that it just converges to a zero matrix. And, uh, and uh, even if it converges, then it converges usually. So we have uh, no example up to the simple here. Uh, it converges neither to the optimal solution with regard to Frobenius nor the spectral norm. And that is all. Uh, also more or less clear if one is really looking at the structure of the proofs that it cannot happen that Katsu's algorithm uh, is working uh, correctly because it throws away already a lot of information about the matrix in the first step by looking only at the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue. So it cannot, cannot be work. And uh, the solutions for the three algorithms only coincide in the trivial case if you would be able, have been able to find the best rank one Hankel approximation already by usual SVD. Yeah, if this is already of the right form, then, then we are done. Okay, so and uh, yeah, you find at least the second part of the talk in our preprint on uh, optimal rank one Hankel approximation of matrices. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that talk.